In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The beginning of the Passion Week of our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ. And as I mentioned to our faithful earlier today, <clears throat> unfortunately, people think that the, this Holy Week, Holy and Great Friday, and Holy Pascha, is the time for Christians to come to church and kiss the icon, kiss the crucifix of Jesus Christ, and light a candle. And that's it. Of course, this is necessary. We must come and we must venerate the icon of the Nymphio, the bridegroom, and we must light our candle and our candles. But it's much more than that. It's more like finding the parallels in our lives with the very life of our one God, the God before the ages, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the King of Israel, the one God in Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and particularly during this week, our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave his life as a ransom for many. <coughs> It means that we must pick up our cross. But what, what does this mean, to pick up our cross? Now we've heard many times. Now we've heard many times concerning the fact that we have to come to the point where we actually understand that we're never going to make paradise in this life. There are many people who try to make paradise in this life and the more you try to make paradise or find paradise in this life, the more you find hell, the more you find torment. Paradise is not in this life. Adam and Eve were right, rightly banished from paradise because paradise could not have such rebellion. Paradise could not have such disobedience. Paradise could not have such shame. The wages of sin is death. And unfortunately, we are the inheritors and we ourselves find this sickness within us. And there has to be a method to be healed. And that method is the cross, crucifixion, humility. The cross of our Lord is raised up on Holy Friday. For God exalts the humble. But dashes down the proud. Before the resurrection comes the crucifixion. After the crucifixion comes the resurrection. And every day of this week, we have a special message, a special teaching, special lessons, which specifically have to do with not just the passion of Jesus Christ, but our passions, our own passions, which are healed by the passion of Jesus Christ. Today, there are two particular things which we remember. In this, the Holy Monastery. Many churches, of course, have the services, but it's different in a monastery. As we know from our fathers, from the writings of the, the fathers, but also from experience, monasteries are supposed to be powerhouses of grace. We, of course, fall short. It's supposed to be a factory where people become sanctified. We, of course, fall short. The fathers prophesy that in the last days, people will move closer to the monasteries so as to find some spiritual life. In this monastery, we say then, we hear today concerning Joseph the Alcomli and concerning the fig tree. We hear it in the Synexarian and we'll hear it in the canon. The fig tree was cursed by our Lord, the fig tree symbolized the Jewish synagogue. Not only was it bereft of grace from the time of the crucifixion, but it was cursed. And Joseph, the most beautiful, the all comely, is remembered today. You remember Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jacob's son, Joseph is the one we commemorate today. 
Joseph was a prophet who was actually a type of Jesus Christ. Joseph, it specifically says in scriptures, was a good-looking man. He was handsome. And oftentimes, people like that fall into temptations, many temptations, temptations of pride, temptations of vainglory of the flesh, temptation, carnal temptations. It's much easier to fall into temptations. A person can become very much immoral. But this man was above all of that. Before the coming of Christ, he had reached great virtue. He had many brothers who were jealous of him because he was the beloved of his father, Jacob. And what happened to him? His brothers came up with a story that he was eaten by a wild animal, by a lion, to his father. But Joseph was put into a pit. He descended into the pit. And then he was taken by some and brought to the land of Egypt where he was sold. And he was a slave. And then, by God's providence, he became the lord of the land of Egypt because he helped Pharaoh interpret the dream. And there are so many lessons we can learn from him. But eventually, he found his brothers. They were brought to the land of Egypt at a time of famine, great famine. And Joseph had his brothers arrested and brought to him. And finally, he revealed his identity to his brothers who tried to have him killed. And his brothers, of course, were terrified because of the just retribution which they would have, which would have been their dessert. They would have deserved. But Joseph said to them, Fear not, for though you made counsel against me for evil, God made counsel, God to counsel for me for good. And he blessed his brethren, and he took care of his brethren, and he fed his brethren, and he called his father to the land of Egypt. Joseph is the Lord over the land of Egypt. What does that mean? It signifies something important. For the fathers teach us that the land of Egypt signifies the land of the passions. People are slaves to their passions. A few days ago I mentioned that we should understand the significance of the stone which needs to be rolled away from the sepulcher for it was very great, very heavy. And the sepulcher signifies our heart and somebody needs to move that stone. And people are at a loss because they don't understand that Jesus Christ needs to move it for us. We need a redeemer. We need somebody to help us in the condition that we're in. Many people are stuck. They don't want to change. They don't want to admit. They don't want to humble themselves. They don't want to understand the sickness of the condition of mankind. They don't want to go up on the cross. They don't want to be elevated on the cross. Because we're not wise, we don't understand that behold to the cross, joy has come to the whole world. The resurrection comes to us, just like what happened to Joseph, the all-comely who was in a pit as our Lord went down into Hades. And he came out of the pit, and eventually he was the Lord over the land of Egypt, that is, the Lord over his own passions. Think of this person who lived in the Old Testament at the time before the coming of our Savior. What virtue this person had. You took counsel against me for evil but God for good. He, hold, he held no grudge. He understood that by forgiving, he himself not only would receive forgiveness, for he did not have any great sin, although no man is sinless, but he was receiving crowns. And he did not forgive them for the sake of receiving crowns. He forgave because he loved 
because he understood that greater love is no man than this than to lay down his life for his friends, and for this reason Joseph is a type of Jesus Christ. On this day then, Monday of the Holy and Great Week, we remember Joseph the All-Comely, the man of great virtue, the man who is the Lord over his passions, the man who became the Lord of Egypt. He said the word in Egypt, and it was done. Out of Egypt have I called my son, we read in scriptures. And Joseph truly is a son of the Most High God. Let us pray, therefore, to the Holy Joseph, the All-Comely, to help us along the path of salvation to be virtuous. Because the past couple of weeks, we heard in the Old Testament readings, if we were paying attention in Vespers of the pre-sanctified liturgy, concerning Joseph and the whole story. And when we hear that during Great Lent, we know we're getting closer to the end of Great Lent. We've been prepared, in other words, by hearing the Old Testament readings concerning Joseph, to come to this very day to honor Joseph the Alcomli, together with the Nymphio, the bridegroom, because Joseph is a type of the bridegroom, Jesus Christ. If we go on the cross, my beloved, we, have, we eventually become lords over the land of Egypt, lords over our own passions. And we reign together with Christ in the age to come. From this holy icon, which is in the middle of the church, the icon of the bridegroom of the church, the extreme humility of Jesus Christ, rays of grace come forth to all of those who wish to receive it. Let us receive it. Let us pray now that we have reached finally the 11th hour, the last week of Holy and Great Lent, the last week before Pascha. Let us pray that the Lord deem us worthy to pick up our own cross, to come to Holy and Great Thursday, where many events take place, the Mystical Supper, the agony of Christ in the garden, the betrayal. To come to Holy Friday, beholding the spitting upon the one God who is hymned by the angels from before the ages. To behold in truth the humility of Jesus Christ upon the cross. Behold in truth the love of Jesus Christ who is upon the cross. To behold how exaltation comes from the cross, to behold how the cross signifies mortification of the flesh, to behold the love of the Master from the cross, and to tell ourselves, the Lord did this for me. Can I not suffer a little bit for him? My legs hurt a little bit during church service. So what? How is that compared to Jesus Christ on the cross? My eyes hurt because I'm tired. My hand hurts. My throat hurts. My back hurts. Connect with Jesus Christ and say glory to thee, O Lord, that I can suffer for thee. For here I am praying. Here I am making sacrifices for thee. How foolish we are. Sometimes we're like little babies. We don't know. God gives us opportunities to come closer to him over and over and over. Are we like the rebels? Or are we like the servants of Jesus Christ? Let us suffer a little bit with him so that we may reign with him. For the suffering is very short, a very short period of time. Let us humble ourselves. The humiliation is very short. Look at the humiliation of Joseph the Alcumbly. So as to reign with Jesus Christ unto the ages. No end. The suffering is short, the glory is for eternity, and the vice versa. If we want our glory in this life, and if we are going to try to find paradise in this life, or if we want to live a life, a comfortable life without any suffering, we have so many examples, which we've already heard, especially this past week, concerning 
Lazarus and the rich man. Lazarus suffered here on earth, and now it's the rich man's turn to suffer for eternity. These things have been told to us, my beloved, many times over and over and over, and still it's difficult for us to understand it. O Lord, open our eyes. O Lord, open our hearts. O Lord, open our minds. Enlighten us, O Lord, to understand at least a little bit thy love for mankind. We should pray. May the Lord grant unto us his illumination during this holy week, and may we be deemed worthy to celebrate the festival of festivals, the holy resurrection of our Jesus Christ, to whom be glory, together with his Father and the Holy Spirit. Amen.